Hello and welcome to Challenge Solutions. My name is Caitlin and in this video I'll be providing a tutorial of web browsing on an iPad using VoiceOver and a Bluetooth keyboard. This demonstration will be done using a 6th generation iPad running iOS 14 in a Zag Folio keyboard case. However, the information provided in this video can apply to any iPad with any Bluetooth keyboard running a recent version of iOS. It can also apply to iPhones that are connected to a Bluetooth keyboard, although the location of some buttons in support may differ slightly. Some things are at the bottom instead of the top. It's important to note that this video assumes that you already have an understanding of the voiceover rotor, what it is and how it works, as well as a basic understanding of Bluetooth keyboard navigation features. If you are unfamiliar with either of these things, there are videos on the Challenge Solutions channel that demonstrate the voiceover rotor as well as basic navigation with a Bluetooth keyboard. Those videos will be linked in the description below and you should go watch those before you proceed with this one. With that being said, let's go ahead and transition to a screen recording of my iPad and I will start the demonstration of using Safari with voiceover. Okay. If you are following along with functional eyeballs, you should now be able to see my iPad home screen. Before we get started with the web browsing tutorial, just a quick reminder that this tutorial assumes that you are already familiar with basic voiceover gestures and basic Bluetooth keyboard shortcuts for iOS. If you're not familiar with either of those things, then you should go watch those tutorials before you proceed with this one. The links will be in the description of this video. For now, we're going to open Safari. I happen to already have my Safari app open, so I'm just going to press command tab on my Bluetooth keyboard to open it, but obviously you would open your Safari app as you would any other app via voiceover gestures or Bluetooth keyboard keystrokes. I'll press command tab now. Safari, Safari, cap S, button. Okay, we are now in the Safari app. Before we begin navigating a website, I'm just going to quickly show you the options in the toolbar at the top of this screen. So I'm going to four finger tap near the top of my screen to focus voiceover on the first item. Toolbar, back, end, button. You heard it say back dimmed button. That is your back arrow. So if you needed to back out of a web page, this is what you would press. We cannot go back right now because there's no page to go back to. So it is currently dimmed. We'll swipe right. Forward dimmed button. There's our forward arrow. We'll swipe right again. Show bookmarks button. This is how you would open the bookmarks panel. We'll swipe right again. Format options button. The format options button is actually a pretty useful menu that lets you change the way you view certain websites. So for instance, if you have a website that is just covered in those horrible ads that slide down from the top of the screen and throw voiceover for a loop, you can double tap on this button and put the website into reader view and it sort of cleans it up a little bit and makes it a little bit easier for voiceover to read and dodge those slide down advertisements. We are not going to go into that menu just yet because this website doesn't need to be reformatted, but just know that it is there. If you are ever having a problem navigating a website, you can try playing around with the options in this menu. Address, DrVo.com, secure and validated connection. Here we have the address bar. So to open that, you would just double tap or VO space with your Bluetooth keyboard. And then you can type with your Bluetooth keyboard and press enter to go to the URL that you've entered. Or you can use Braille screen input or any other typing mode that iOS has to offer. We'll swipe right again. Reload button. This is your reload button or refresh button. Obviously, that's how you would reload a web page if it's giving you problems. We'll swipe right again. Toolbar share button. This is how you open the iOS share sheet. So if you need to send a link to someone or copy a link or do anything involving exporting a web page from Safari, this is where you'll go. You'll just double tap it and it will open a list of sharing options so you can send it to other apps or text it to someone, etc, etc. We'll swipe right again. New tab button. There we have the new tab button. So obviously this is what you'll double tap to open a new tab. You can also press command T on your Bluetooth keyboard. Tabs button. This is where you will open a list of open tabs. Favorites tab. This is your favorites tab. Close tab button. This is where you can close the open tab. You can also press command W on your Bluetooth keyboard. Selected. DuckDuckGo. Privacy. Simplified. Tab. There you heard it read the name of the open tab, which is DuckDuckGo.com. Unpronounceable. Three right words arrows. Link. Actions now, available. I'm now going to open a new tab with command T and we're going to go to challengesolutions.org and use that as the website for our navigation demonstration. So I'll do that now. We'll hit command T. 
toolbar, back, end, button. It opened a new tab and deposited us at the first item on the screen in that toolbar, so we're going to swipe to the address bar. Forward, it selected, show address, search or enter website name. We'll VO space. Address, text field, is editing, search or enter website name, line mode, insertion point at start. It opened the text field and placed us in edit mode, so I'm going to type in challengesolutions.org and press enter. And I believe it has loaded. Oh, voiceover seems to have frozen. Let me touch and drag. Hello, and welcome to Challenge Solutions. Okay, so I touched and dragged and put us in the welcome message on the Challenge Solutions blog. And then I used a two-finger tap to silence voiceover. We're now on the Challenge Solutions homepage. And this is a pretty simple, clean website layout. I made it pretty clean so that people could have an easy time reading and navigating it with screen readers and any kind of assistive technology. So it's a really simple layout. I will say that not all websites are going to be this nice and easy to navigate. Some of them get weird with screen readers, but this is a good one to show you the very basics of navigation on. So we're going to start at the top. I'm just going to swipe up with two fingers and then two finger tap to stop speech. So we go to the top of this web page. Now, this website consists of headings, links, and text, essentially. This is the foundation of pretty much any website you're going to visit, but obviously certain other websites are going to have ads embedded in them and different images and embedded videos and things of that nature. My recommendation for any website that you visit is that you swipe through the entire page before you try to do any kind of fancy navigation. You don't necessarily have to do this if you've just conducted a Google search. You can kind of use your heading shortcut to move through different aspects of it and pretty much find the main heading that you need and then swipe right from there. But say if you're visiting a Blackboard page for school or anything that you're going to be using for work, I recommend that you swipe through it and familiarize yourself with every single element on that web page just so that you know what's there and you have a basic idea of how it's laid out and where things are that you might need in the future. If you've just Googled a recipe or an answer to a question or something like that, you can typically use your heading shortcut and find the heading of the thing that you need and then swipe right or VO arrow from there to read the text beneath that heading. Headings are basically things that divide up web pages by section and then under each heading you can have subheadings or links or text or any number of things. But for now we're going to move by heading through the Challenge Solutions homepage. To move by heading you can obviously use your voiceover rotor link in the description if you're not familiar with that or you can use your bluetooth keyboard to access the voiceover rotor so we're going to use the keyboard to use the rotor on the keyboard you have to have quick nav enabled so we're going to press the left and right arrows together to make sure that's toggled on that noise means quick nav is off so we're going to press left and right arrows together again that noise means quick nav is on to turn the rotor, you're going to use your up arrow and left arrow, or up arrow and right arrow. So we're going to use up and right to turn to headings. Speaking rate, sounds, headings. And now down arrow to move by heading. Challenge solutions, heading level one, link. Welcome to challenge solutions, heading level two, link, bookmark, keynote for iOS, a PowerPoint alternative for the blind, heading level two, link, article, landmark, bookmark. So those different headings are different elements on the website. This heading that we just stopped on is the heading for our latest blog post. It is Macy's keynote tutorial. So to read the text beneath this heading, I'm just going to press my right arrow. Note that if quick nav is off, you will have to use a VO right arrow. You can also swipe. In this video, link. Macy gives a tutorial of Keynote for iOS, link. Posted by Challenge Solutions, link. So as I press my right arrow, you heard voiceover read the text beneath that heading. We had a link that you could click to get to the video. To click that link, you'll just use VO space or up and down arrow together or double tap. And it also continues to read that text. If you had a braille display connected, it would output any of the headings or text, basically all the elements on this web page, whatever voiceover says, your braille display is going to output. We can also use the rotor to move by lines, links, paragraphs, etc. and use different elements of navigation to make navigating websites easier. The layout of the website is going to kind of determine what rotor element you use to do what where. My favorite method is to go to the heading and then read the text under it. It's just the easiest way to do things. I'm going to open a blog post link and then we will take a look at the format options button. So let's find a good blog post that has some text to it. 
Science classes. The Wiki Sticks Appreciation Podcast. Heading level two. Math concepts for the blind and visually socializing with the sightlings. Heading iPad Air Force Generation and Apple Mac comparing smart home devices for the blind students. Talk about tech. Heading tips for English teachers with blind or visually impaired students. Heading level two. Link, article, landmark, bookmark. This post has a lot of text below it, so I'm going to use the up and down arrows to click this link and open the blog post link directly. Blog at WordPress.com. Link and content information. Okay, it opened that blog post. Now we are going to go back up to that toolbar with a four finger tap at the top. Skip to content in page link. Skip to content in page link. Or not. We're going to touch and drag in the left corner. 1241A toolbar. View more posts. 1241A toolbar. Back button. Note that sometimes you will have to do that. VoiceOver will kind of get stuck in the content area and you will have to touch and drag your way out of it. So that's a pretty common occurrence. You can also use your Bluetooth keyboard to jump to the top of the screen. We're going to swipe right to that format options button. Forward, dimmed, show bookmarks, button, format options, button. Actions Double available. Tap. Safari, page scale, 100%, adjustable. Actions available. Here's where you can adjust your page scaling. Show reader view, button. You can show reader view, which is a really nice way to clean up websites if they've got a ton of ads on them. Hide toolbar button. You can hide the toolbar at the top of the screen. Request mobile website button. You can request a mobile website if you would like to view it in a mobile layout instead of a basic desktop layout. Website settings button. You can adjust different website settings. Privacy report button. You can get a privacy report. Privacy report button. And that is the bottom of this menu. My favorite and most used option in this menu is reader view. So I'm going to go ahead and swipe back to that and double tap it. Website set request mobile high tool show reader view page get show reader view button. Toolbar back button. And this basically just cleans up the website. So I'm going to start at the top and swipe through so you can see what changed. English teachers link comma back forward end tips for English teacher January 2nd 2021 link tips for teachers link a one one comma. Ex com, black, comma, braille, comma, educate, comma, ink, comma, literacy, comma, reading, in, this, Caitlin provide, separator, one, maintain, two, use, three, four, five, six, seven, avoid, eight, nine, curse, and, voice, three, these, okay, ten, vertical scroll, vertical scroll bar, five pages, adjustable. You heard me swipe through that entire page, but there was none of the extra stuff at the bottom of this post as there would have been without reader view. If reader view were not enabled, voiceover would have continued to scroll and read related posts and other widgets that are at the bottom of our website. But with reader view enabled, it takes all that stuff away and just gives you the post that you clicked on. It also did show the tags associated with the post in kind of the WordPress metadata that we have. Unfortunately, I have not been able to clean that up and make it go away for voiceover but it did take away the stuff at the top and bottom and made it just have the post on the screen so if you just want to focus on your content and not have to worry about advertisements or anything crazy disrupting your reading with a screen reader then this is a great way to do it so we're going to two finger scrub to get out of here skip to content in page link and it took us back to the top of the challenge solutions web page this concludes my introduction to Safari. This was a super brief introduction to web navigation, but you really do kind of have to have just a basic foundation of how to use Safari and then adapt it to whatever website you're working with. Now we're going to transition back to a video of my face for the outro. That concludes this tutorial of web browsing on an iPad using voiceover and a Bluetooth keyboard. If you have any questions or suggestions for future content, please leave them in a comment below or send us an email via the contact form on challengesolutions.org. Please give this video a thumbs up if you found it helpful and remember that you can subscribe to the Challenge Solutions blog, podcast, and YouTube channel for more content like this. Thank you for watching.